This presentation is about multivariate regression models. So, so far, we had only one independent variable student teacher ratio in our test score example, class size example. But we can put more than one independent variable in our model. So this is x1, but we can have also x2, x3, x4, etc. And this is the presentation why we need to do that sometimes. So you already know the results of our simple regression model. Simple is because it has only one independent variable. For example, what if we know that average income in every district of California is influencing our student-teacher ratio and also is influencing test scores? For example, if in some uh, district there's people with more income, it means that actually in these uh, districts they can uh, have more teachers, so student-teacher ratio will be reduced. In this way so as always uh, when, when average income is, is increasing the student teacher ratio is decreasing because they can have more teachers so student teacher ratio will go down but also at the same time test scores will, will go up because of the higher average income why because uh, those those students living in this area have uh, re richer parents they can offer him some private classes they can uh, offer him some additional education they can invest more in, in in those kids and this is why their test scores is, is much higher so we have the case of a metered variable variable that actually is influencing our independent variable and our in the, our dependent variable, so influencing uh, both x and y. Uh, there is also one more example in our case uh, with the percentage of English learners. What does that mean actually? If you have in some districts more immigrants, which means people that doesn't have English language as their native language, so probably because of that their performance at test scores will be lower because they don't understand quite well the questions in the test and so on this is why the test scores will be lower so it is obvious correlation between percentage of english learners those who have to learn english language and their results on the test scores but also in the same districts where you have more immigrants more english learners the, the pressure on teacher is high, teachers is higher because there is more students in classes and this is why student-teacher ratio is going up. So we have also a correlation between omitted variable and our independent variable. In our example, we have checked the coefficient correlation, which is 0.19. It is not very high, but anyway, it is positive, showing us that there is a correlation between English learners, percentage of English learners, and student-teacher ratio. Uh, omitted variable bias occurs when two things are true. Bias actually means that our beta 1 coefficient will be biased. It won't be exact, but, but as we want to be. So, a metered variable is correlated with the variable in the model, like in our case, when percentage of English learners is correlated with the student-teacher ratio. But also, a metered variable helps to determine the dependent variable y. Like in our case, the percentage of English learners, learners is influencing the performance of test, uh, tests, so the, the result of test scores. There are three examples uh, to show you when this case is the true and when it's not. For example, in the case of percentage of English learners, we have the correlation with student-teacher ratio and it likely causes test scores. So yes, this is the case of omitted variable. Second case, time of the day of the test. Is this uh, omitted variable? It does not correlate with student-teacher ratio. So the time uh, when you are having the test probably won't, it is not correlating with the, with the size of the class. It doesn't have any, any connection. But on the other side, it causes that the uh, test scores are uh, different. It may be if the test is early in the morning that the performance of students will be lower in comparison maybe to 
to the test given at the uh, middle of the day. So we have only correlation between omitted variable, between uh, time of the day and the test scores. In third case, parking lot space. Uh, you remember that this is an example from uh, the California. So in the United States, it is very important that you have a lot of parking places uh, close to school because many students and, and all teachers are coming with the cars to, to their work. So it is uh, probably correlated with the student-teacher ratio. The bigger the parking space, the more students you have, and you have more teachers. Uh, uh, so the, the, the size of the classes is probably different. But on the other side, parking lot space doesn't have any relationship with the test scores. It doesn't matter how big parking place is. It won't influence your test scores. So only the first case is actually the case of omitted variable because it is correlated with both with independent variable x and with dependent variable y. Second and third case are not the cases of omitted variables. Why? Because here we do not have any relationship between, between time of the day of the test and student-teacher ratio. And here we don't have any relationship with parking lot space and results of test scores. Why is there a bias? So, Actually, uh, because first assumption is not true in that case. You remember that we are expecting that average value of our residuals, expected value of our residuals for any given x is zero. So on average, that our uh, differences of original data from the model are zero. And also that means that ui, our error, and xi, our independent variable, are correlated. Why are they correlated? If this is our simple regression example, and this is our error, our residual, inside of this residual is the influence of all the other factors or the other variables not included in the model. And also here is the influence of x2 of the omitted variable. So omitted variable is correlated with the x1. So x2 is correlated with the x1 and therefore ui is correlated with x1. So this is why we don't have first assumption satisfied. And this is why we have actually ui influencing the x, x1. And this is the problem that we need to solve. But also in the same time, do not forget x2 is correlated with yi also. So in our example, Percentage of English learners, this will be the acronym EL for that, is included in the error, in the, in the residual. Uh, this problem won't go away if you increase the sample. <clears throat> it can stay the same problem, so you need to do something else with that. So this is formula for our bias. So we will have some estimate, beta 1 hat, and it is uh, going towards true value of beta 1 in the population, but it has some bias. It has some, some difference from the true value of beta 1. And this difference is actually due to omitted variable. This uh, symbol here, rho, is actually coefficient of correlation between x1 and x2, between our independent variable x1 and our omitted variable x2. The higher this coefficient is, the bigger the bias. So, as already said, this bias is persistent even in the large samples. Uh, degree of bias goes up if correlation rho goes up. And direction of the bias depends upon the sign of the rho. It doesn't matter if uh, rho is negative or positive, the rho will, go, will influence the bias. And the, it will be the, the higher the rho, the bigger the bias will be of our estimate. So, in our example, correlation between student-teacher ratio and percentage of English students is close to 0.2%, 0.2 actually, no, not without percent, I'm sorry. And it is included in our error. So, therefore, uh, when English percentage of English students goes up, student-teacher ratio will uh, go up and the test scores will go down. So, rho is actually, I'm sorry, this is a mistake here, rho is actually positive. 
So correlation is positive between these two coefficients. So we are expecting that uh, student, ratio, student teacher ratio goes up if we include English learners in our, in our example. How to overcome this problem? We need to add variable to the model. So we will add omitted variable into our model. Now we have multivariate model because we have more than one independent variable. We have two. In our example, we will add percentage of English learners here. How do we interpret on these coefficients? Now we have beta 1 and beta 2. Actually, beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat, right, in, in, in our sample. So, beta 1 is actually showing us the change in y due to change in x1 holding x2 constant. So, change of our dependent variable due to unit change of our independent variable x1 holding that x2 other independent variable is constant, unchanged. Beta 2. So, beta 2 is showing us the change in y due to change in x2 holding x1 constant. So, changes, beta 2 is showing us the changes in our dependent variable y due to unit change of independent variable x2 holding x1 or all the other independent variables, if there is more, constant. So, multivariate regression model in general looks like this. So, we have x1, x2, xk independent variables. Uh, providing that uh, k must be lower than n. So, the number of data must be always higher than the number of independent variables in the model. Uh, the problems with assumptions are still the same, and problems of, with heteroscedasticity and homoscedasticity issue are also the same. So, it is good if we have homoscedastic case that the variance is constant. This is why at the beginning of every model we need to uh, draw scatter plots of pairs of every independent variable with dependent variable y. On the other side, if we have heteroscedasticity, we will have more than one uh, variance. Our variance in the model won't be constant. So I, I have actually answered this question here. Which of these two cases is heteroscedastic? This one is heteroscedastic because of this small letter i, uh, saying us that we have more than one variance. Can we make a graph of multivariate model? Well, it is impossible if you have more than uh, two independent variables, but if you have two, you can still do it. For example, in this uh, here, so sales are is y, it is our dependent variable, and our independent variables are investment in propaganda on TV and on radio here. And you cannot have any more uh, straight line, but you have a surface, you have so-called plane. So this is what it looks like a chessboard with uh, those uh, small uh, interrupted lines. This is actually our theoretical data where these dots, red, uh, purple and, and uh, probably uh, black, are actually our original data. So this is the way how you can present your uh, multivariate model if you have two independent variables. This is the end of presentation.